Hello everyone, thanks for coming out on the trail with me today and joining me for my first episode of Trail Meals. This is going to be a new little series I'm starting on my channel where I focus exclusively on the food that I make and prepare while I'm out on my backpacking trips. So when I'm preparing food to go out on a trip, the three main things that I'm focusing on is perishability, packability, and nutritional value. So when I talk about perishability, because I'm only going out for one to three nights at a time, I don't really have to worry about too many things going bad. Nothing is worse than getting to your campsite at the end of the day and finding out that something you've packed has either leaked or gone bad. So it's important for me when I'm planning what food I'm bringing with me on the trail, I have to think about what I'm bringing and if it's gonna have any issues with time and temperature abuse, and if it's gonna make it to my campsite with me at the end of my trip. And so a lot of the things that I package and take with me are either okay at room temperature or either dehydrated or packaged to be able to be okay at room temperature. You know, during the winter, you might not have to worry about it as much, but out here in the desert during the summer, it's like hiking almost in an oven. And so things you take with you have to be able to withstand that temperature. Packability is another huge issue. Obviously, you can't bring a four course meal with you out on the trail. You have to be smart about what you're picking and choosing to make sure that what you're bringing doesn't blow your food bag out, but still gives you a great meal at the end of the day. Nutritional value is huge for me. If you're spending all day out on the trail, you need to give your body some good food at the end of the day. And so what I've found is being able to pack out my own food gives me the ultimate control over what I'm eating at the end of the day on the trail. The main things I'm thinking about is I'm trying to get at least 500 calories for a meal. I'm trying to get at least 20 grams of protein and I'm trying to get a good amount of some fats in there as well. So for me, nutritional value comes down to a few simple things. I wanna make sure I get some good protein I want to make sure I get some good fats and I want to make sure I give my body enough calories so that I'm refueling and at the next day on the trail, my tank is full and I can hit that trail ready to run. Because I'm trying to recreate these meals as close as possible to how I make them when I'm out on the trail, I'm using my stove that I use out on the trail, which is the MSR wind burner. I love it because it packs down into itself here so it's really nice and compact and it's extremely fuel efficient. I love eating hot food. I eat hot food breakfast and dinner and sometimes even lunch I'll be known to have a ramen or something out on the trail. I don't really have to worry about bringing multiple fuel canisters with me. So being able to have hot meals out on the trail and not worrying about running out of fuel, this is a great reason why I've loved this piece of equipment. It boils enough water that even for me, I can have multiple meals, or if I'm bringing my girlfriend along with me, I can prepare food for both of us with it, and it really has worked well for me out on the trail. So let's get it set up and let's get cooking. Today's meal on the trail is gonna be a cheesy chicken Spanish rice with avocados and tortillas. Okay, so the basic ingredients we're gonna work with today, the base of it is gonna be this uh, packaged Spanish style rice. I get this at Safeway or Walmart. Um, I really like it because it's organic. It's really nice because it stays fresh in the backpack. You don't have to refrigerate it. And it's nice because all you have to basically do is kind of knead it a little bit and add some liquid and uh, let it rehydrate. So it works really well. They have a couple different varieties you can work with, but this one is really, really good flavor. So we're gonna work with that one today. The chicken that we're gonna work with is this canned chicken. I like using this because I'm not a big tuna guy. So being able to bring some other good forms of protein out on the trail, for me, I add it into almost everything that I cook with. Our next component here is gonna be the tomato juice. So I could just add water to it, but this is another good way to add just some more flavor. I like these nice little cans because you can, again, just kind of pack them out, crush them when you're done. And uh, it's a nice way to add some flavor in there. So we also have our little seasoning kit we're gonna add here. I have an avocado we're gonna chop up. I got two little Baby Bell white cheddars that we're gonna let melt in there and get nice and cheesy. This is another great one that I like to work with. And this is some clarified butter. I like putting that in there because it adds a little bit of fat into the dish. So it adds another little bit of calories and a little bit of uh, fat content in there, which is great at the end of the day. So we got all of our ingredients here. Let's get cooking. All right, first step here is we're gonna add one cup of water and our tomato juice. After we've added the rice, I'm gonna add in my chicken. 
and now I have it on about medium heat and I'm just going to stir it for probably about two to three minutes just until it comes up to a simmer. I have my seasoning kit right here. This is some salt, pepper, garlic spice, smoked paprika, and a little chili. And we're gonna add that in. And now we're gonna add in our cheeses. One, two. And now that we've got our cheese added in, we're gonna turn the heat down to low and continue stirring for just another minute and then we're going to turn it off cap it and let it sit for about five minutes and there we have it cheesy chicken spanish rice get it on the plate get it in my belly